be here, and um, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to not be boring for the children, because I remember when I was a child, and the the sermon was very boring, you know, right? Bata, ikaw, hello, como esta? Tomaga, happy Sabbath. I'm talking to you, the children. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Sometimes I have to jump around the stage, but I'll, I'll mostly be here. I just, I feel very honored and privileged to speak to anybody, but especially here in the Philippines. It's a, it's a joy and it's an honor, a privilege and all of those nice words. And Dan would ask me to speak here. And uh, when I see your faces, I uh, recognize people here. So there was a, a famous, is this one going to work better? Okay. There was a famous speaker, professor actually, who was asked to speak at a very notable graduation ceremony. And he, he walked up to the pedestal here, not here, but where he was. And he said something really profound. He said, Jesus loves me, or you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Have you heard that before? Can you say it with me today? Say it with me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And then he went and sat down. And you can imagine some of the people were disappointed because they were expecting an elaborate speech, you know? Um, whereas others were thinking, you know, that is the most important subject, topic. Everything that we see and everything that we know about the Bible really is about God's love for us. And so Jesus' love for us is definite, it's clear, it's there. The question I want to pose to each one here today, and to myself, to us, is do we love Him? Do we love Jesus? We like to say we do. Uh, even the Muslims, I've talked to some Muslims who said, to be a true Muslim, you have to believe in Jesus and love Jesus. And I was thinking, well, that's interesting. And the Muslims said, God bless. But what I, you know, know and realize is they don't really know and believe in Him as God, as the Son of God, and as the Savior of mankind, and as their personal Savior from sin, right? So we have to understand who He is. We have to know Him and love Him with all our heart. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the Bible says... Whatsoever you do, do all to the honor and glory of God. Diba? I'm going to say another additional prayer because I just feel that, that I'm really nobody and uh, know nothing. And I need to learn. So just bow your heads with me today and I'm going to offer another word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, humbly ask that you would be with us, all of us, but especially me now as... Of myself, I really am nobody and I don't know anything, but I know that with you and through you there is no end to the knowledge that you can give me, that you can impart to me. So Lord, that's what I'm asking that you would do today, is give me words and give me knowledge that could be a turning point in the lives of even just one person today. But if not, everybody here... And those watching, if this is on the internet, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as some of you know, I, I travel the country and um, talk about health. But this morning, I felt impressed after prayer and uh, thinking to shed light on something else. Okay? As an American, I have um, kind of a responsibility to keep on... Uh, keep up to date on the American news, what's going on in America. America is a prophetic country. It is a superpower country, correct? People think of America as, uh, I want to see if this court, oh, it's kind of short. People think 
of America as uh, the ruler of the world type of, uh, like it's, it's strong and, and they've got to be right, especially on, on health care and, you know, if America figures it out and they do it, it's right. But also, I'm an American, but also as a Seventh-day Adventist, I have been learning some things that are pretty profound through prophecy, through the Bible. Have any of you heard of the book called The Great Controversy? Just raise your hand. I know it's kind of boring so far. Sorry. It'll get better. Just keep listening. The Great Controversy. Raise your hand. Okay. I'm sure you've heard of Ellen G. White. She is the author. Ellen G. White is listed in the encyclopedia as the most prolific female writer of all times. Um, writing on more varied subjects than any other writer, she is clearly a talented, uh, a profound writer. Some of her books, the book on the life of Christ called The, the Desire of Ages, is at the um, library, or library of Congress on a table with glass and a light. It's, it's a notable book. The United States notes this book as the best book on the life of Christ ever written. But the book, The Great Controversy, I would encourage any of you, if you haven't read it, to read it. Because what is going on right now in the United States is really, really incredible. So I'm going to give you some information and it's going to lead into a health message. Our opening verse was about the tongue, right? The tongue. Isn't it interesting, in researching, and I've researched this, we find out that the tongue, through the words, has caused some pretty major events, like the Holocaust, or World War I, and World War II. And sure, some of that is through um, uh, radio, some of it's through written, but it all starts in the mind and the words and the tongue, and we find that the tongue and what we say, that the use of the tongue can create so much havoc and chaos and so many deaths. But what's interesting, if you read more about the tongue, it is also the cause of more deaths than all the Holocaust and world wars just by the taste buds and what we eat in eating the wrong foods. Did you know that? That heart disease is the number one killer in America? One point some million deaths, 2015? That's more deaths than, you know, if you add up all the people that died since the beginning of time, or since, of course, the diet started changing, it's more deaths than what happened through all of the wars. So, in the United States, we have some profound things happening. Um, and it was brought to my attention through some leaders in our church, conference leaders. One of the things that happened is that a... A notable woman, I will not say her name, but at the uh, House of Congress made a statement to the nation that we need to mandate going to church. We need to make it uh, a law. And when it, uh, three uh, television press people went after her to get some questions answered, she was shocked, and she then publicly put on television how shocked she was that there would be any objection to the idea of forcing people to go to church. Because when there's problems, she believed, as she was raised going to church, we need to go to church. But my question is, today is really forcing this upon people, forcing going to church good? And if so, what church 